Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. We're talking about the graduate certificate and executive coaching program that we have here at William James College. My name is Sarah Johansson. I work in the marketing department here at William James. Um, so I'll be your host today. Um, I'll go through a little bit of an overview of the college and then introduce our presenters. So we have with us today Suzanne Bullis, who is the director of the executive coaching program. So she'll talk about um, the requirements for the program, the classes, some of the faculty members, um, and what you'd need to know um, going into the program. And then we also have Ashley Sosa Felice, who is here as our admissions counselor, um, who will talk a little bit about the admissions process and how to move forward with an application um, if you're interested. Uh, so we can move to the next slide. And a little bit about William James College. So you can see on this slide that um, is our campus building and we are located in Newton, Massachusetts. So on the map there, you can see we're just outside of Boston. So this makes it easy for our students to get to campus when they need to. Um, so whether that's for in-person classes, for residency, um, if they just want to access the library in person or come to an event on campus, um, it's really easily accessible from a number of major highways. Um, but this also puts us in a great location to have a lot of connections with different organizations, um, nonprofits, schools, et cetera, in the Boston area and the greater Boston area, um, and even extending out um, throughout New England. Um, so we really are in a great location to provide a lot of different opportunities um, for our students. Um, so on the next slide here, uh, this just gives you a little bit of an overview of the different departments and programs that we offer at William James. Um, so the GSEC, as we call it, the Graduate Certificate and Executive Coaching Program, falls in the Organizational and Leadership Department. So you can see there on the middle of the slide that we have um, a couple of graduate level degrees as well as a school leadership graduate certificate. So I'm assuming everyone in the webinar today is interested in that department. Um, we have some great faculty in that department, some really, really great students across all of those programs. But I like to show this slide just to give you a sense of the other um, different areas of expertise and fields um, and you know, faculty and, and students that you may encounter in your time at William James. So we have a clinical department, we have a counseling department and a school department, which offer a variety of graduate um, degrees and certificates. And then we also have a bachelor's completion program um, for psychology and human services. Um, so again, I just like to show this slide so you can see all of the, the different things and the different um, degrees that we offer here at William James. On the next slide, um, I just want to talk briefly about our core values, which really extend across all the programs. Everything you saw on the previous slide, um, these core values are really important for um, each of those and for all of our students. So. Firstly, on the slide, you can see personal growth. So um, in addition to our students coming to William James to get some professional experience, earn their certificate or degree, um, we really want our students to um, grow personally as well. So we have mentorship opportunities. We have um, lots of ways that our students throughout the school can connect with each other. We have a really active Dean of Students office, um, a number of student organizations. So there really are a lot of ways for our community and our students to come together and um, grow personally. Um, secondly, on the side here, you can see social responsibility. So this is something that is really critical to our mission at William James. Um, again, through all of our academic programs, but even beyond that, through our, uh, we have some centers of excellence who do a lot of advocacy work um, through what our faculty and our staff do on a day-to-day -day basis. We really prioritize social responsibility and making a difference in our communities. So at a local level, um, if you're working with a local organization, volunteer work, um, even on a global scale through our Center for Multicultural and Global Mental Health. Um, and lastly, on the left side side of the slide, you can see experiential education. And this is, again, something critical to our students um, during their time here. We really want them to put into practice what they're learning in the classroom and not just listen to a lecture or respond to a discussion post, read the textbook, but actually um, get that hands-on experience um, in the field uh, before graduating. Um, and lastly, I want to mention that at William James, we have a commitment to diversity, inclusion, social justice, and intercultural understanding. Um, so again, 
across our entire community, we really um, strive to come together and educate each other, um, learn, um, and really take action on these uh, initiatives as well. On the next slide here, um, I want to just go over a few housekeeping items um, before we get into the presentation today. Um, so all of you are joining us for a live webinar and we are so happy to have you here today so that you can um, ask as many questions as you have and really get all of the information that you're looking for about the GSEC program, about William James in general. Um, so at any point throughout the presentation today, uh, don't hesitate to submit any questions you have into the question box and there'll be some time at the end for us to go through those and get those answered for you. Um, and I also want to mention that you can download all the slides that you're seeing here today in the handout section. Um, so this is a great resource for you as well to get all the information about the program. Um, there's some contact information at the end that you might want to have. So I definitely encourage everyone to uh, take a moment to do that as well. So I think we can move on. And I believe this is our poll for everyone. Um, so we're really wondering what draws you to an executive coaching program. So if everyone could take a moment and answer that, um, this will give us a sense of who's joined us today and um, how we can gear the presentation towards what you're most interested in. Okay, great. So it looks like 63% uh, majority are interested in adding new skills. That's great to see, as well as some um, external coaches and a few who are looking for a career change. So again, I want to say we're so happy to have you here today, um, and we hope that uh, whichever way you answer this poll, uh, you find this webinar helpful for you. So I think we can close that and move to the next slide. Um, and now it is my pleasure to introduce Suzanne Bullis. Thank you, Sarah, and um, hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for your interest in the Graduate Certificate in Executive Coaching um, program at William James College. As Sarah was already, um, you know, saying it, it we call it uh, we call it GSEC and so thank you for spending some of your um, lunchtime hour with us today um, I'm the director of the executive coaching program and I'm also a member of the faculty and like the rest of our of our faculty in our program I'm a practicing executive coach um, I have my own executive coaching practice I work with clients to help them make change develop new skills and behaviors, and really to become more effective leaders. Uh, executive coaches come from a variety of background, and we see that really um, from the range of students who uh, join our programs. Uh, my background is in management consulting, with over 25 years working with strategic planning firms independently, and um, for Fortune 500 companies, nonprofit organizations, and also with entrepreneurs starting or developing their own business. I've worked in a wide variety of industries, several continents, and I'm particularly interested um, in the role of culture in cross-cultural situations. But one thing I'd like to share is I'm actually a graduate of the GSEC program. So, some years ago, when coaching seemed to be taking an increasingly important role in my consulting practice, I realized that really this was the direction I wanted to pursue. And I, you know, that seems to be the experience of several of um, you know people who apply um, to our program. That's why I'm I'm sharing that with you. And I did some research into coaching programs, um, and I encourage you all to do to do that as well. And the reasons I chose William James College at that point, it was the Massachusetts School of Professional Psychology. Um, they're the same reasons, really, that I'm very proud to be leading um, this executive coaching program um, today. So on the next slide, you will see a little bit what's unique um, 
about, about our program. First, we offer the only accredited graduate school program in executive coaching in, in, in New England. And um, it's a graduate level program that combines theory and practice of coaching. It's a program that's academically rigorous, but also um, it's also very practical. We give our students a lot of ongoing coaching practice, whether, you know, sort of through coaching each other all the time. And even, you know, they start at, at orientation. They have informal coaching client. And then there's also a, a three and a half months supervised practicum <clears throat> where they actually have a client they work with. But I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, in in a few minutes. So uh, when you think of coaching programs, there's sort of two two types of coaching program. Uh, commercial providers that provide coaching programs that you don't really have to apply for um, that focus on on skills and one coaching model. And then there's coaching programs in academic institutions where it's really uh, a combination of theory and practice, and where there isn't one model. We actually introduce our students to a variety of models, all the foundations of coaching, and let them evolve and 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 you know choose the model that seems to work for them. So our program is a blend of theory and practice, and um, you know we feel that's really uh, very important. Students learn about psychological frameworks and how to apply them to the coaching process um, and other theoretical frameworks as well that have been known and researched for years and how to translate those to the actual practice of coaching. Um, they also learn about the latest research in coaching, how that translates. We are doing more and more with neuroscience and the impact that that has. Um, and, and as I said, we don't um, follow one model. So our students really gain an exceptionally strong foundation of cutting edge knowledge. So now maybe on the last, next slide, um, a little bit about how our program works. So it's an eight month program that, um, well, the next cohort starts in January. So it would be January to August. The, the following cohort would start in August. So it's five consecutive courses and I'll tell you a little bit more about those. They build on, e on each other. You, everybody has to take the five courses. You start with the cohort and you end with the cohort. Um, it's 15 um, academic credits. Some of those are, tra are transferable to the master's program at William James College. Um, it's approved by the International Coach Feder Federation, ICF. Some of you may have heard of them. And it's uh, really a collaborative cohort training model. So uh, we believe very strongly that students will learn with and from each other and, you know, great, get great diversity. I mean, we have um, really a great faculty, but a lot of adult learning also happens uh, from, from each other. So it's, um, our, our model is going to be for the upcoming uh, cohort, January, um, it will be fully virtual, both the synchronous and asynchronous parts. Uh, we will still have weekends and residence once a month, virtually held. And then in, in between, the, the classroom will also be online and it's weekly modules um, with assignments, in deliverables, so you know you'll be listening to lectures, you'll have assigned readings, watch videos, recordings, and then there'll be some um, interactive uh, activities such as uh, threaded discussion boards that are related to the assignment. So our, our students are really fully engaged with with each other and with the instructors throughout the program. Uh, that's very important to us, and we work very closely with our students. We believe um, the support is essential. Students establish close relationships with peers and faculty, and we have found that these relationships really deepen um, as the program unfolds, and typically beyond the program. Our, our alumni stay uh, in touch with us and and with with, the, with each other, and we really um, we really love that. 
So for those of you um, who are not familiar with the executive coaching, on the, on the next slide you will see how executive coaching is a little bit different than you know, coaching without the executive piece in it. So um, it's still an experiential and individualized leader development pro process. And you know, the goal is to help the leader achieve short and lo long-term organizational goal and their own leadership uh, goals as well. So it's conducted through one-on-one -on -one interactions between the leader and the coach. And where it's different from, you know, if you were just coaching one-on-one, -on -one, it's driven by data from multiple perspectives. That's where assessments and 360 feedback uh, come in. And we do, you know, we have a whole course around that in, in our program. And of course, you know, it's based on mutual trust and respect. So it's really like a, a triangle, the organization, the executive, and the executive coach work in partnership to achieve maximum impact. So some examples where executive coaches can help their um, their clients um, to you know drive organizational success, enhance their capacity to inspire and engage others, to build and manage team performance, to communicate better, to build relationships and influence, and often to also make decisions about their careers. So, you know, as an executive coach, you want to understand the organization. You want to, of course, use your interpersonal skills to build trust and, and respect. And, you know, we often find we help resolve uh, conflict as well. So um, our students leave the program you know, fully equipped to conduct, you know, these, these engagement. And the next slide, you can see a little bit some of the competencies about uh, our executive coaching. So we use as a foundation the International Coach Federation uh, competencies that you see on the on the left of the, of the slide. For example, uh, foundation would mean uh, would include things like ethics, uh, professional standards, how you establish coaching agreements, uh, co-creating the the relationship. You know that's the piece that's based on the trust with the client and uh, developing a coaching presence. That's really important. We work a lot with that in the program because in the end you are the tool. Um, communicating effectively, those are the, the coaching the coaching toolbox, you know, listening, powerful questions, uh, reframing and the like. And finally, obviously our goal is to facilitate learning and results. And, you know, that's done by creating awareness, designing actions, planning, goal setting, and of course, managing the progress and accountability. Uh, we take these basic foundational uh, competencies a little bit further um, because we tie them to executive coaching and we um, base those on the executive coaching forum. Um, and um, here, you know, we add to that the psychology of individuals and groups, coaching practice, practices, organizations and how they work and how businesses work as well. On the next slide, um, you know, coaching, you know, is a growing field where professionals with diverse backgrounds find new and exciting opportunity as external coaches or coaches op operating um, within organizations. In fact, the internal coaching or coaching that's tied to leadership development has been growing um, rapidly. So a lot of organizations are using coaching that way. The, the workplace has changed in so much so, you know, the past couple of years really, and leaders face a multitude of new challenges and they have to operate in these turbulent environments that we sometimes refer to as VUCA, where the the V stands for rapid, sudden, constant change. It's an environment where the information is unclear, where there's multiple variables, and it, there's a lot of clarity, lack of clarity about, about events. And so leaders need new skills and behavior to navigate um, these new, new drivers. And that's where executive coaches um, really can play a, a, a key role in helping leaders be successful in such uh, environments. 
And if you can see on the next uh, slide, um, you can see, you can read at the slide. I'll give you a second to, to look at the slide. It really represents how coaching has really evolved over the past um, couple of decades and so much more um, integrated, better managed uh, in, in organizations. And it's uh, often, you know, as I mentioned, bundled with uh, leadership development programs. Also, um, sponsors of coaching in organization are, have become more sophisticated. So as the coaching profession has, has evolved, there's an increasing need for coaches who ground their practice in um, solid theoretical understanding and empirically tested models. And so, as I mentioned you know, earlier, our program covers um, all of that. So I think on the on next slide, you can see what the um, January START program looks like. You can see the five courses, and I'll take you briefly through those. Um, so we start uh, in early January. Orientation is on a Friday, but otherwise, all the weekends are Saturday, Sunday. There may be one that's on a Friday that would be indicated on the schedule, which is posted on our on our website um, as well. So um, the courses really build on, on each other and are designed by the faculty um, to, to, to do that. And our faculty, just a couple of words, they're all practicing executive coaches. As I mentioned, they're seasoned teachers of adult learners. They know how to work uh, with adults. Um, some of us are thought leaders. Um, we come from a variety of background, have different coaching styles. And then we have master coach supervisors um, that will supervise our students during uh, the practicum. And they have uh, you know, a variety uh, of, of backgrounds as well and are really very experienced. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about each courses before I hand this back over to, um, to Sarah or, or Ashley. Um, so EC500, the first course is really, it really lays um, the foundation. Um, I teach that one and it, you know, executive coaching, like I said, comes from a variety of disciplines, you know, whether psychology, systems theory, adult learning theories. We examine all of that in others and the increasing importance of uh, neuroscience. We also look at culture and the role that culture plays as well. And we explore in depth what is the most important tool in coaching, the use of self. And uh, this focus on self-development, um, self-awareness and cultivating presence is a theme throughout um, our program. So our students learn, you know, coaching competencies, ethics, models of coaching, and they start practicing basic coaching skills in this course. They then move on to the skills, techniques, and practices course, which focuses more deeply on um, the coaching skills and uh, and also on um, you know coaching presence. And that is taught by uh, Perry Carrison, who per Perry's been a trusted advisor to senior executives. Um, his clients uh, range from the World Bank to the Discovery Channel to Takeda to Marriott. He's um, provided them, his specialty is really this kind of perceptive partnering um, uh, to help them as they figure out their next uh, their next steps. Um, so this practice-oriented co course focuses on applying coaching skills to effectively develop leaders. So continue gaining expertise in some of the um, ICF competencies um, and, um, you know, students coach each other. They get exposed to a variety of scenarios from real life experiences. And um, of course, they continue their work on the use of self um, throughout this, uh, this course. So as move, we move to the next course, so the, the first three courses, the two I mentioned and this one, are really our foundational courses. They're five weeks each and they're, you know, structured in modules. So every module will have, as I explained earlier, an assignment, something to prepare, uh, to something to read, 
or, or, or watch, and then there will be a deliverable. Um, so the third course in that, in that grouping is the assessment course that I mentioned earlier. I think we're probably one of the few, if only, uh, executive coaching programs that offers a course on, on assessment. So uh, Bill is a full-time faculty member in the OLP department, and um, he's recently retired from Fidelity Investments, where he was vice president of enterprise coaching and shared services talent management. So his responsibilities included providing uh, executive coaching, developmental assessments, and other learning resources to senior executives, uh, company-wide and global uh, and globally as well. Um, Bill is an experienced senior executive coach. He brings, truly brings an extensive knowledge of leadership development, assessments, behavioral science um, to, to his work. He also is a thought leader and he his latest paper and research is on um, the need for agility in coaching. So this course prepares um, students to implement um, and or evaluate the results of an assessment for an executive coaching intervention. It introduces a variety of assessment methods that are commonly used to understand a leader and the system in which a leader operates. So some of the assessments covered, for example, are you know um, the MBTI, Fire B, Career Anchors, and more. And then we also look at methods of structured interviews, 360 degree feedback instruments and interviews and other um, organizational uh, assessments as well. Once the students have completed those three foundational courses, we move into the second part of the program where the focus really is on the practicum. Um, and so the practicum is three and a half months and it's um, taught by Susan Ennis. The, the, the format then changes to sort of from weekly modules to sort of monthly monthly modules still with the once a month um, weekend in residence uh, conducted you know uh, definitely in there. So Susan let me tell you a little bit about Susan Ennis. She's had over 30 years of experience in executive development um, her experience is in executive coaching, leadership development, competency modeling, and she's also very practical. <laughs> you know, provides you know simple uh, solutions to complex business and learning challenges. She has her own consulting firm, and she's coached hundreds um, of, of executives. Um, in in this practicum, uh, our students work with a manager, an executive, or a leader who's seeking coaching for professional development. Uh, we actually provide a client for our students. You don't have to go out and find a client. We have a partnership with the Social Innovation uh, Forum in, in the Boston area, which is a nonprofit organization that uh, you know puts together and helps nonprofit leaders in the greater Boston area who are implementing you know, so solutions to critical social issues in, you know, creating positive change. We also have a network of other nonprofit organizations that, that work on, um, you know, social change and creating, uh, you know, positive change. Um, so we, we draw our clients from the school of leaders. Um, we're very proud of that because in addition to providing an opportunity for our students to to train, right, and to become executive coaching, we're actually making a difference uh, as our students are helping these leaders grow and, you know, have an impact in the community. Um, the students are also provided with an, a master coach. Each, each student will have a master coach supervisor that will mentor them through this engagement, in addition to actually going to class and being supervised uh, by, by Susan. And we also will help students start to um, supervise each other, the beginning of sort of peer, peer coaching. And um, so, you know, so as students leave the program, they're fully um, 
equipped to um, to conduct an executive coaching engagement from beginning to end, from when they meet the manager or the HR person that is hiring them in the organization to the chemistry check with their client, to designing a, a, a contract, to choosing assessments, uh, developing a 360, delivering a feedback, creating a development plan, and then having coaching sessions and wrapping up. Um, so students will learn to do all of that and will actually have done it with um, with the real clients. And finally, we have a shorter course that is held on the same weekends as the practicum and that complements the practicum and complements everything that, you know, the rest of the program really. It's designed to support um, GSEC students in their professional development as executive coaches. Um, it provides a deeper exploration of topics and, you know, uh, the introduction of new topics that are relevant to the all aspects of coaching. And those, you know, <clears throat> can change. Uh, but I give you an example. We covered recently. We've been covering mindfulness, the importance of that, uh, different definitions of that, how it relates to coaches both for themselves and to help their clients. We've covered immunity to change, emotional intelligence, um, emotional agility. We've done, um, you know, an extent, a little bit more work on positive psychology and strengths-based coaching. And, you know, we have guest speakers. And we also sometimes, have, depending on the, you know, need of our students, we will have a sort of hang a shingle a day where we talk about what it's like to start um, to start a practice. Um, and let me show you a little bit. So that's for the courses. Before I leave you, I just wanted to show a couple of testimonials uh, from some of our students. Um, Amy, who now has a thriving practice. Um, and then I think the the next the next one is the letter <laughs> that we received from somebody, you know, Junki was a, actually is a leader, he runs a company, but he wanted to become a, a better leader, a leader slash coach, and felt that really the program allowed him to do that. So just to sort of give you a little example of the different types of students that will apply um, to our program. In talking about who are our students on the next slide, you'll see that, uh, students really established professionals, right? They're already established in, in their career. They, high, they have a high level of expertise. If you can look at this next slide, please. Um, and, and they bring that high level of expertise to the cohort and to the uh, classroom. Some students take a program to build additional skills, to enhance their careers, make a career change, or just to have options for the future. So at this point, I'd like to thank you for your time and for your interest. You can see these photos of uh, one of our cohorts graduating uh, a few years ago. So just wanna let you know, please don't hesitate to contact me if you are interested in January. Um, there is still time, but we, we have to move fast. So make sure to contact me and admissions. And I'm always happy to talk to you, find out what it is you're looking for, um, tell you about our program and figure out whether the fit makes sense um, for you. So I'm gonna pass things on, I believe to Ashley right now. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, um, my name is Ashley. I'm an admission counselor here at William James College. So a little bit about the application process. So um, for this program, what we would need is a bachelor's degree um, along with five years of professional experience in either business, psychology or close uh, related field. Uh, we would ask you to also complete an online application form the application is $60 for one program, and for two programs, it's $75. Um, we also ask for an essay, your resume, one letter of recommendation. Um, there is an interview um, along with the application process. So once you submit your application, you would hear from us about interviews. Um, and then the GRE is not required for this um, program. Um, 
A little bit about the deadline. So for spring 2022, the application deadline is December 1st. Um, you're welcome to submit an application a lot sooner, um, but we would request that all application materials are sent in by that date. Um, and then for fall 2022, um, Early consideration is April 6th, and then general consideration is July 6th. Um, so that's some dates to keep in mind. I think we're ready for some questions. Perfect, great. So as um, we said at the beginning of the webinar, as you have any questions about anything that's been talked about today, whether it's about William James, whether it's about uh, the GSEC program or the application process, um, you could submit those through the question box now um, and we'll get through uh, as many as we can in the time we have left today. Um, so Suzanne, I think a question we get a lot uh, in these Q&A sessions is um, people who haven't been back to school in a while, who haven't done an online program maybe before, um, could you talk about the support that's available for students who might be nervous? Most of our students <laughs> haven't been at school for a long time, haven't really worked with the technology or, 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 or that for, for and done your sort of online school uh, in a long time. So I just want to reassure you, um, yes, we work very closely with you. Um, the programs we use are very um, user friendly. We take our time. We prepare you before you start. When you start, uh, we're there, we're available. Uh, not just the program, William James College as well. Um, the IT department is, is fantastic. The instructional technology the department is, is fantastic. So we are very much aware of that. And you won't be alone. Um, the rest of the <laughs> cohort will be very much like you uh, most of the time and will be there to support you. So uh, yeah, it might take a few days to adjust to, to to new things but it'll be fine i promise great and could you talk a little bit more about how this program fits in with a schedule if you're working full-time how it like specifically is designed for that oh, of course the, the program is actually designed for working professionals and people who have families as well and so most of our students fall in 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 that category so uh, other than the weekends and residence once a month which are required you have to be there during those those hours and in a co occasional you know evening class which is usually 90 minutes and we we'll let you know ahead of time um you can do all the rest of the work at your own um uh, you know in your own time there are requirements it is an academic program so there are deliverables you have to deliver what you have what we expect on time but you could be doing all the, the work and the preparation anytime so um, definitely very doable it is a commitment of course and so you know it wouldn't be a good idea to do that and schedule a whole bunch of new other new activities but yes um, all our students um, are usually in that in that situation and the program is designed for that Okay, great. And if someone is interested in this program but doesn't live in Massachusetts or doesn't live in the New England area, um, is it possible to take this program? Are there support with finding connections to organizations? Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. The, actually, the January um, uh, cohort is virtual, so it is open to a national audience. So you can be anywhere. Your client uh, for the practicum will probably be in Massachusetts, but the coaching will be virtual. So um, absolutely, you'll get all the support you need. And the January cohort, you know, we have enlarged it that way so that we can serve a larger group of students. So you just have to figure out the time difference, right? So if you're in California uh, for our weekends, you might have to get up a little bit earlier, but um, otherwise, uh, absolutely. Yeah. We'd love to have people from all over the country. Okay, great. And uh, we have another question here asking, in your experience, who is the client? Um, they're saying the executive or the executive's employer, who's the person who usually hires or pays for the coaching services? So the, if, if you're in an executive coaching engagement, think of it as a triangle, the organization. So if, there's, if it's the triangle, the organization, the client and you, the organization pays, uh, 
pays for your services, but that's why contracting, but you're working with the leader or the executive that you've been hired for. That's why contracting and ethics are really important. And we spend quite a bit of time working with students, explaining those differences and how you structure those engagements so you can maintain you know, the confidentiality of your work with your client while you're at the same time serving the organization. Now, having said that, you can, work with a, with a client without an organization, then it's a private uh, engagement and the client can pay you uh, directly. But then you won't have access to the organization and their resources and the ability to go interview people around the client. But once you do our program, you can use, use it in any way you, you like. Kind of on a similar topic, do you have a sense of what some of the graduates are um, from the program end up doing um, after they get their certificate? Do they do more of the private practice, more of the company internal? It's, it's, really, it's really a mix. Uh, when the program started, and I think it was a while back, it's probably the first program in the OLP department. It was mostly, you know, people wanting to become executive coaches and transitioning to that. We are finding right now with the interest of coaching inside organizations and, you know, in, in, in the HR departments, learning and development, that a lot of people who work inside organizations find themselves dealing with leaders all the time. And, and it's sort of informally coaching and, and want to be better equipped um, to, to have coaching skills on the inside and then start coaching leaders on the inside. So we've seen quite a bit of that. We have people who use it in HR. We have people who are transitioning and starting their own practice. We also have people who are very interested in coaching, like to add the coaching skills to their current uh, position with the idea of slowly building a practice on the side and maybe doing that afterwards are um, you know we have I, as I said we had somebody who was a leader in an organization wanted at coaching so it's it's all over the place really you you can adjust it to what you need to do we have people who work in uh, adult and executive education programs after that um, or join a um, consulting slash coaching um, group as well, there's many possibilities, it really depends on what you want to do. Um, is that something uh, a student would need to know going into the program? Would they need to have a plan throughout the program or just figure no, it out? You don't need to know that. You need to want to do it and have an idea, but and also have the right expectations, right? I mean, executive coaching, you don't get hired immediately as an executive coach as though, you know, in, in another profession, you have to, you have to build it. So you have to build some credibility. Uh, no, absolutely. We're quite open. And often we find that students during the program, especially students in transition or curious about some new things, start figuring it out um, during, during the program. We don't expect it, right? We just expect the that you have the right expectation, right? That you won't be uh, looking to coach the CEO of a Fortune 500 company the minute you leave the program. So, yes, exactly. Um, so uh, during the webinar, you mentioned some assessment tools, like 360 assessment. Um, is this something that um, is provided to the students in the program? Um, could you talk a little bit about? how you use that and uh that yeah, we, we do it in a variety of way in the assessment course students will actually take a 360 online um themselves uh and so they will learn to debrief it what it looks like we want our students to to feel to understand what it feels like to to do assessments etc we will have you take several assessments we provide we provide all the, those those things um what we do not do is we cannot certify you an assessment because those are owned by uh different companies so but but we expose you to them and you can decide whether there's uh, is anything you're interested in and we also teach you how to do a stakeholder uh, narrative 360 where it's not an online one you actually will interview the um your stakeholders around uh, around a leader and the practicum so those might be direct reports peers supervisor and and create um a report from that so you'd be doing qualitative analysis of these interviews that you do so you get a lot of practice on how how to use assessments you'll take them yourself, you'll debrief, and you'll learn how to do that with clients as well. 
Okay, and for those tools, are they available to graduates after the program? Um, is that something that they have access to? These are owned for any of you familiar. I mean, you, you can think of the MBTI or they're owned by companies. They're not owned by us. You would have to decide and go and get certified. There are some free uh, assessments. We will let you know what, where they are. You can just find them on the web. Uh, but for some of the you know, more well-known um, assessments, um, you have to actually then decide and get certified. We can't do that. We don't own them and no program actually owns them. The 360, we will teach you how to do a 360 that will then be yours. Okay, and uh, changing gears a little bit to the application and the application process, um, could you talk a little bit about what makes a good applicant for this program, like what you're looking for in the essay and the interview? Um, yeah, I think in, in terms of the uh, the 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 essay, the best thing actually <laughs> is to get in touch with me. Tell me your story. <laughs> Tell me what uh, what. what why you want to do this and uh, whether it makes sense. What I look for is um, that it makes sense for you and that it makes sense for us, that you're, this is the right program. And um, in terms of the other pieces, you know, the, the William James requires that you have an undergrad um, degree. You have to have worked, our, our, uh, have had some work experience. Our students really have established um, you know, they have expertise. Uh, uh, so uh, we don't, it's not a program for people right out of college. It just would not, it would not work well. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. The interview is going to be a little bit the same. It's just a conversation about, you know, about you and your interest and what you're hoping to do and uh, answering your questions, telling you more about about us. Uh, we we're the type of program where we get, we engage with our with our students, right? We get to know you, you get to know us. Um, so that starts through you know the application process. Okay, and um, at the beginning of the presentation, when we were talking about the different programs and departments at William James, um, could you talk a little bit about how the GSEC program fits in with the organizational and leadership department? Um, do you have a lot of students who kind of do multiple degrees in the area? You, you can't, um, yes, so the organizational leadership psychology program, as you as you mentioned, Sarah, there's this ID uh, program, there's a master's program with various concentrations, and then there's the graduate certificate in, in executive coaching. That's sort of the, the umbrella. Um, you cannot, the, the, the William James does not support uh, doing two programs at the same time. But we we have seen over the years, um, students who have done the, the GSEC program and who were also looking for a master's program then do the master's in organizational psychology program you can transfer a couple of the courses we have had people from the master's program or this id program in fact right now we have a student who uh, did this id program deciding that they wanted some um, coaching skills more extensive coaching skills and will decide to take um, the GSEC program but not together Okay, um, and uh, one thing I, I want to ask too is um, what makes this program something that, you know, a prospective coach should take? You know, what makes William James unique, um, this program for, for a coach? <laughs> well, everything about it. <laughs> I, I think what, what really uh, makes it unique, unique is our students. Uh, the 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 rigor of our standards. Uh, you know, it is an academic program, uh, and it, that's very important to us. Um, and the other piece is really this practicum um, that we have. And I think again, we're probably one of the only ones, and we've presented it at conferences because actually, with the practicum, not only are we helping our students become coaches with a lot of support. So we provide a lot of support, and at the same time, they are doing work in the community. And that, you know, is important to us as a program. It's important, you know, it follows William James <laughs> values very much. So, you know, in terms of our program, and you think of William James uh, as um, values, right, personal growth, 
obviously <laughs> you really develop and grow um, social responsibility the, the work that we do in the practicum is that also in this we've, we've always done it this has been in our program for a very long time but when you think of what's happening in the world right now at the sense of you know social justice you know our, our, our students are right in the middle of it and working in 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 that environment and of course it's, it, it's very experiential but it's also theoretical so very evidence-based and we don't impose a model we, we really allow our students to sort of develop who they are as coaches okay and um one thing that um we get asked to i'm seeing some questions here about the cohort model what is typically the size of the cohort that you see how does the cohort work together throughout the program sure the start the uh, our cohorts are, are typically between eight I would say in 12, we have had cohorts of 15. 15 is our maximum number for cohort because we, we want people to get to know each other. And that happens immediately. Like at, at orientation, people start working uh, with each other. And, um, you know, virtually we've been very successful at, at that. First of all, during our weekends and resident, the activities that we do, they're all, you know, experiential. So students get to know each other that way. And the assignments that the discussion boards, these are discussions between students. They're not, they're not with faculty. In fact, faculty will pose the question and stay out of the discussion board and allow students to, to share. So we design a lot of activities for them to get to, to know each other and they get very close. Okay, awesome. So uh, we're getting close to the end of our time together. Um, we can move on to the next slide, which I believe is the contact information that we mentioned throughout the webinar. So if you have a question that didn't get asked today, or if you think of one after we log off, um, or if you have something specific about your particular background or um, experience, et cetera, um, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to Suzanne herself or uh, the admissions office. Um, if you have a question and you're not sure who could answer your question, you can email um, info at williamjames.edu and they can direct you to the right person as well. Um, and then I do want to mention that, um, again, you can download all these slides in the handout section, um, but our website, williamjames.edu, is another great resource as well. So you can get all the information about the GSEC program, the OLP department, William James, um, admissions, et cetera. Um, you can see um, news stories and there's a lot of great information there as well. Um, so I definitely encourage you to check that out. Um, and finally, you can see on the side here that we're active on all of those social media channels um, at the bottom. Um, so definitely connect with us there if you're interested in staying up to date about William James, seeing um, the great work that our students and faculty and staff are doing. Um, so, Suzanne, do you have any last words um, about the program or? No, I mean, thank you, Sarah, for, for everything. I I just, if you are interested in, in January, in applying for January, I would really encourage you to submit the application, even if it's not complete. Once it's submitted, we, we can take it on our end to do the follow-up, the interviews, because we are already in the beginning of, of November. So that takes a little bit of time. So even if you don't have everything in it together, but your intention is to apply, then I, you know, I, I recommend that you do that um, sooner rather than later, because before we know it, we get into the, <laughs> the holiday seasons and the program does start in early January. We still are you know, accepting uh, students for that uh, and you know reach out and I'm, I'm happy to talk to you anytime okay great so thank you Suzanne for uh, presenting today um, and thank you to Ashley um, and of course thank you to everyone for joining us today I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon Th thank you all thank you Sarah thank you Ashley <laughs>